let's say New Orleans. If you're if you're walking down the street of New Orleans, what do they say to you? And then I want to ask you, what would they say to you if you're walking down the streets of Carolina or Atlanta? In New Orleans, it's simple. It's just who that. It, it's that's it. That's an e easy across the street, down the sidewalk. It's it's kind of like that fraternity. But it's, they don't ask you specifics about the team. It's more of just that Saints greeting. I, that's the Saints greeting. In a more intimate setting, it might be, hey, you know, how are we going to be this year? It's, it's a it's a it's a unique fan base because when you really look at all the SEC football that exists in Alabama, Mississippi, even into Florida, um, there's one NFL team. And so it's it's Alabama, it's Mississippi, it's uh, the panhandle of Florida. That's all uh, Saints country. Yeah. And that's where our season ticket holders come from as well. So um, they're very passionate. Well, having the proximity to LSU, but but still having an SEC feel to your fan base is is kind of remarkable because usually in the South, their professional teams are their college teams. Absolutely, absolutely. Mississippi, Mississippi State, Auburn, Alabama, LSU, uh, all of it within a, I would say, four-hour drive from from where we're at. Do you watch a lot of co college football? We get the second halves when we get to the hotel. It's on in the training room. Um, we catch the end of games. Our players, our younger players especially, are vested in the, those scores. Can you get anything from, like if you watch Deshaun Watson against Alabama, Yeah. could you come away from that yes. saying, oh, yes. you, you could? Absolutely. You know There's something special about him, right? I mean, I just met him two minutes ago, and when you watch the game, it's always interesting to hear him talk afterwards. And uh, I think he... He appears to have all those things that we're looking for. I was talking to Drew Brees yesterday, and I, I said to him, you know, I know he wants to play a couple more years. I don't know how long he wants to play, but he still loves working out. He still loves practice. And I think that's the first thing that leaves you is that enthusiasm to prepare and get better. Yeah. And he's one of the most competitive people I've ever met. And that's yeah. saying a lot. Fair to, yeah. But Brees is competitive. We read him his uh, draft analysis. So you last did. last year we got we just had the negatives, and we had him read what they said about him coming out of college. He said, "Can I have this?" He wanted the piece of paper that it was on. He said, "I'm going to use this as motivation." Was he fuming? <laughs> um, Paulie, Dan, it was after last year of the Super Bowl. We read it. It was fun. Hijinks on the air, and they come to me. He goes, "Hey, you got a copy of that? I want to bring it home and put it up and where I could lift weights." <laughs> I was, can't imagine. No, I mean, that's, but yeah, that, that absolutely. makes your job easier. Absolutely. But it, it, does it make your job tougher that you eventually have to draft his replacement? Don't you? Well, I think, be it in the draft or in free agency, and yet that transaction may take place not in the same year that he's being replaced. Or I, we pay close attention to, hey, what are, what are the signs and, I don't see any. We don't see any. We just finished reading our team, and uh, his his preparation, his attention to detail is amazing. Um, but his movement skills, you know, these guys are so much further along in regards to their rest, their recovery, their nutrition. Yeah. I mean, it wasn't long ago where it was a, a Fresca and a, a Marlboro <laughs> at halftime. Like, that wasn't that long ago. And I just think that... Uh, where we've come from a training standpoint is extended and you're seeing guys, you know, the Mannings and the Brady's and the Bre you're seeing these guys play longer um, because of a much more different training regimen. What did you think of Brady coming out of high or college? Do you remember? Anything I do. Uh, we share the same agent. And so this was at a time when there wasn't a lot of information about the combine. And so Don Yee would have me occasionally call a prospect that he had and kind of fill them in as to this is what to expect. You know, you're going to be in a dome. Your hands are going to be sweaty. The balls are going to be kind of, um, they're not going to be the broken in pat balls that you're used to throwing. So get six new balls out. Um, try to throw in this condition of 68 degrees. Um, just little things that prep a guy for the combine. And I can recall conversations with him leading up to the draft. And... Uh, I was at the Giants. I had a high grade on him. Ernie, of course, he will tell you this. My only problem is the scout to my left, um, Whitey, who was there later in his career. And Whitey was the scout that he was there still, bless the mares. But, you know, his, re <laughs> his reports would be, and 
my biggest fear happened when it came to me and I, I went through my grade and why I saw him as this, Whitey agreed with me and it was over. He, 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 when Whitey agreed with me, I had no chance of like pushing this through. <laughs> <laughs> would, you, would the Giants have drafted him? Yeah, I think, I think our final grade probably was in the fourth round. And one of the things that happens in the draft all the time is if you're in the fifth round, you're probably drafting a player you've got graded in the third round because everyone else isn't seeing it exactly as you see it. So at some point, it gets off two rounds, and then when you're in round four, there's a two that's still sitting there on your board. When you're in six, there's a four or okay. maybe a three on your board. So it would be very rare to have a fifth round grade on a player and draft him in the fifth round by the time you get to that round because you're probably going to have a few players graded higher. That happened with, with Romo and Dallas. Yeah. You know, we had a fifth round grade. We began discussing drafting him. And then all the way into the seventh round, there was a higher graded player when we signed him as a free agent. We're talking to Drew Brees. All right, Drew Brees is coach, I should say. He's on my mind. Sean Payton, the uh, Saints head coach. But also, I, you know, I don't know. Uh, like the Packers did this with Aaron Rodgers. You know, the, the awkward timing of we got to draft somebody or uh, the Broncos with Tommy Maddox and John Elway. Like it can be delicate. It, but, yeah, but I think the one thing about Drew is, I know this about him, is regardless of who we select, and we've selected Garrett Grayson a couple years ago in the third round. Um, I think it's, it's seen that way the minute it's a first round or second round pick. Um, and the other part of that that's difficult sometimes when you're in his position is you're looking at it like, man, I want, you know, another player that, that can help yeah. me right now. Yeah. And so I think the organization looks at it closely as to, hey, now and then long term. And so it's a, more, it's a bigger topic when it's a first round selection uh, with a current player. And Brett's the quarterback, but the value changed so much for Aaron, we have to take him. Um, I think that uh, it's really happened a hundred times in sport. Yeah, you know, it's it's just it's the it's the cycle. I also wanted to ask you about one of the gutsy calls in Super Bowl history, where you come out second half and you have the onside kick. When do you think about the onside kick? Um, the the beginning process was the by week. It was all about stealing a possession from Peyton. They were playing well offensively. And, you know, let's say we were 11 or 12 possessions a game. They were scoring at a high rate. Um, Parcells, who was at that time with Miami, talked about that very same moment in the NFC Championship game when the Giants faked a punt against the 49ers. A high-scoring team trying to change, um, you know, all of a sudden a 12-possession game for somebody in a 10 you know, creating a turnover. Mm -hmm. um, but there wasn't a good look from a punt standpoint. We, we kind of had gone down that path, and, and then um, we started looking at the, the onside kick, and there was some conviction. The concern I had was the kicker, Thomas Morstead, was a rookie. Mm -hmm. And the mistake I made at halftime telling him we were going to start the second half with that at the beginning of halftime, because halftime's 35 minutes, and so... He, like, sat in his locker for 30 <laughs> minutes eating a turkey croissant, like, just thinking that instead of telling him as we were going out, which would have been better. But it was gutsy. If you don't get that, do you wonder if you win the Super Bowl? Well, but think about this for a second. That the, the, uh, the downside, if it's recovered, is the 38-yard line, the 40-yard line, 42, 40. In two pass plays, that's where Manning's at. Yeah. And that game was low scoring in the first half. Um, we had enough time. We knew we were going to start the second half with it. And we had enough time to script the first eight plays of the second half and go through the first eight plays. And so, you know, going through that offensively, it's left hash and we're on their side of the 50. And then I want you to get in the moment, and here's, here are the plays. And we scored on play six exactly as the script unfolded. Wow. That, that rarely happens. Um, but the, the downside would be just a little shorter field for an offense that's already 
I think, you know, moving it a. Well, you got to play this up a little more, Sean. If we're going to create this <laughs> legacy here, that it's one of the most. Here, here, I just here, said here one it is. The, the mistake really is going in at the half, telling the officials we're going to kick from left to right because that's the way the wind was blowing. You follow? We had the choice because we had the we had the ball in the first half. So they ask you before you win, which way do you want to kick? Left to right with the win. We make the decision about the onside kick and coming out onto the field. I'm talking to Solomon Wilcox in an interview, and I see the officials teeing the ball up, and I realize the onside kick is going to be on the Colts bench. And immediately I sprint out to the crew, and I said, I want to go right to left, right to left, because let's face it, that was like a scrum, right? I mean, it, you know, Alabama's last year's onside kick yeah. was magnificent. It yeah. was caught. It was clear. Ours was a 50-50 ball, and I think it helped that it was on our sideline. Uh, I'll, I'll give you a time to uh, give a little plug here of what you're doing with uh, Zebra Technologies. You brought? Did you bring, well, bring gifts here? Listen, this is this is our this is our league. I've got. Uh, you got shoulder pads here. So for the last three years, the the company Zebra who. They do all our barcodes. They do everything. 95% of all of our Fortune 500 companies work with this company. So where you see a scan, your, your morning coffee, your groceries, your ski lift ticket, your air, they're in it. That's them. They track, they track things, and they put a small chip. Every one of our players has one of these in the NFL. And I think when we see these next-gen stats, I don't think our fans realize where Tyreek Hill's 23-mile-an-hour time comes from but it's it's from these two chips and every field in our league is marked just like an invisible fence and so when you enter that field it tracks data and it's a pretty interesting it's a pretty interesting concept relative to us as coaches because I want this after practice the average receiver travels six miles at practice and Brandon Cook travels Brandon Cooks traveled 8.2 for the first week he was here and that's a, a soft tissue injury waiting to happen. But from a fan standpoint, you get a chance to, to, to hear terms like miles per hour. We're going to be able to chart kicks through the uprights where they go. We're going to know if a ball crosses the goal line. We can do that today. Yeah. All right. Whether a guy steps out of bounds, these chips, the chips in the ball right now, Thursday night football, the chips been in the ball and it can measure spin. Um, it's pretty smart considering our investment. You know, how fast, how long, how many throws. Someone want to try these on? What, Paulie, you want to put them on? Yeah. We're going to track Paulie? <laughs> well, you, how would you give Paulie a pep talk, though? That's what I'd like to Ooh. know, Coach. Well. By the way, this is a Zebra Technology, the official on-field player tracking provider of the NFL. Oh, yeah. oh, so can you give me, like, the, the pump-up before I'm going out? Can you out? do, well, like, a Friday Night Lights so there, Coach? Real quickly, I will. Um, so this, this. This carpet here, Paulie, is, is, it has to be the field. We need a field that's okay. marked. And so it is marked. And, Paulie, it, you don't get many chances to play football in the state of Texas. Yes, coach. Now. I don't know where you're from. Where South are you from, Ch son? Southside Chicago. Southside of Chicago. Well, you're not from Texas. That's a long way from Kansas, Dorothy. All right. <laughs> Just get your ass ready to go here in the state of Texas. All right. Now, just run a square. <laughs> um, I don't need to see you run. Yeah, it's best. Let me do an up down. It's best. Yeah, oh, up down. I like your effort. I like your attitude. There you go. There you go. And so That's all it. the while Paulie's doing this, we're recording. You're, you're tracking this. We're tracking this, <laughs> and we're gathering this information. We're getting your heart rate as well. Okay, that, who's that groin surgery guy? <laughs> and, I, oh God! All of it's tracked, though, and uh, the data um, probably will be very, very <laughs> average, and yet, uh, <laughs> it'll, but it'll be real. It'll below average. All heart, no talent. All so that's heart. next gen stats. That's what we're getting already. It's uh, Zebra Technologies, uh, the official on-field player tracking provider of the NFL. Sean, it's great to see you. Thank you for stopping by. We appreciate it. Being Absolutely. a good sport there. Uh, Carissa Thompson will join us uh, coming up in, uh, in a little bit. By the way, Coach's Corner, Continental Tire, Coach's Corner, Continental Tire, proud to be the exclusive tire of the Dan Patrick Show, no matter where you drive or what you drive. Continental designs tires for what you do. For more info, visit ContinentalTire.com. Continental Tire for what you do.
Thank you, Coach. We're back after this on The Dan Patrick Show. The Dan Patrick Show, weekday mornings on Audience.